getting back to the transformation of evangelicalism into this thing yet to be named, the yeah. player yet to be named. I, you know, I, I was on a podcast today, not interviewing, but being interviewed. And someone said, you know, what happened? And I, I said, listen, you know, the only thing I can tell you, and as it sounds glib, but because I was a fly on the wall during a lot of this transformation, is that the addiction to power yeah. is really, uh, don't underestimate that. Right, you know, and I, I think that's what happened to us, and as a family, my dad and me, as we went there until I bailed and kind of renounced that. Um, but if someone asked me, you know, how did these good people go from here to here? I think a big taste of power, of access to power, of being in that Oval Office advising the president, goes a long way. I think it does, and the other thing that, uh, again, you know this as as well as I. When we're talking about evangelicalism, we're talking about a religious movement that in some ways does not have uh, does not have boundaries. We we're talking about boundaries earlier. That is to say, evangelical congregations, as you know, are not bound by creeds. They're not bound by tradition. They're not bound by liturgy. There is no hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And so what tends to happen, particularly in the megachurches, is that you have congregations that coalesce around a cult of personality. Yep. And that personality very often, and we can tick off examples, Gordon McDonald, Bill Hybels, you know, um, Mark Driscoll, you can go down the line. That personality has very little accountability. Yeah. And that's where the power comes in, as you talked about. And it's it's it is it it's 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 bracing, I'm sure. I've never really tasted it myself, but it's 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 bracing and and um uh, addictive. And it 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 never ends it always ends badly, it seems to me. Mm -hmm.